Hello and welcome to today's awareness video. This is number four in our series and today we're offering information and advice for young people primarily. Although there's lots of good information coming up as well for parents and indeed anybody who has young people living with them. So please don't turn off just because like me you're not 15 anymore. We're going to be exploring many of the main mental health issues that impact on our young people today and later we'll be providing some ideas, some uh, tips, some self-help tools that hopefully you can take away and use in your day-to-day -day lives to help you cope with these issues. As usual at the end of the video we'll also detail many of our services that are available at the moment and that's for anybody who needs that extra bit of support with their mental health. So for now relax, put the PS4 controller down, save that TikTok video for later and enjoy today's video. You see, PS4, TikTok, and they said I wouldn't be down with the young people. What is mental health? Mental health is about how healthy our mind is and how well it's working. Good mental health doesn't necessarily mean we're feeling 100% fantastic all of the time. It means we're able to enjoy the parts of our lives that are going well, and we're able to cope with the parts of our lives that maybe aren't going so well. And that could be a challenge under normal circumstances, and at the moment, it's a bigger challenge than ever. And everybody is being impacted. Everybody's being affected by the current situation. In fact, I'll let you know a little secret. Would you like to see what's impacting on my mental health more than anything right now? Take a look. Let's talk about stress. Now, all the things that happen to us in our lives, they have an impact on our mental health. And when we feel like we can't cope with what life's throwing at us, that's called stress. Now stress is a strange thing, we can't see it, but we know it's there, we all experience it. And small amounts of stress are a good thing. So if you're preparing for exams or you've got a big game coming up for example, a little bit of stress helps us in those situations and helps us stay focused. But too much stress is bad for us and can have a real negative impact on our mental health. Now I could witter on about stress all day, but I think we need somebody with a bit more expertise. And luckily for you, I've managed to secure the expertise of world-renowned stress and anxiety expert, Dr. Emil Pfeifenhausen, and he's going to make things a little bit clearer for us all. Hello, Dr. Emil Pfeifenhausen at your service. Today I'm presenting clips taken from interviews with my favourite subjects, all about stress. So watch carefully as we discuss many topics, including what are the things that stress you the most? School can be stressful at the minute for uh, a number of reasons. Relationships with friends and family and like love relationships can put a lot of stress on you because if those fail, sometimes you're really invested in them and then you think that that's like, the most important thing, but it's not. Keeping in touch with other family members can be quite a struggle at times. School, obviously being in sick form, our levels are really stressful. Um, there's a lot of pressure from teachers to like do well and like if you have a reputation of doing well that can really stress you out. If one friend falls out with another friend and you're stuck in the middle, that can be pretty difficult. Keeping motivated to keep up with hobbies and other things you enjoy can be a bit hard at times. Social media can be a big factor in people's stress because of body image, especially as like a teenage girl I think social media is really negative sometimes because you always feel like you have to be a certain way, look a certain way and that can put stress on you and take away from the other important things in life. It can also be stressful thinking about the future and what career I might have. I've started a new school this year and I find it pretty stressful at times. Dealing with relationships with friends and other people can be stressful too. And I'd also say things like university like planning ahead um, that can be a big stress because it's a huge decision like deciding what you're going to do with your life and I can get stressed reading too much news about how people are exploiting and damaging the planet ah welcome back very interesting I think you'll agree but what about the current situation we find ourselves in how is that impacting on stress levels let's have a look so during lockdown the most stressful things for me have been not being able to see my friends and other members of my family because they're just part of what makes your life better. Being able to see the people that you love, that's been really hard, not being able to see them. Uh, being at home with the family 24-7 can be pretty stressful sometimes. Okay. I can't play or train for my football team. I find that really hard because it makes me feel good and I really enjoy it. 
I also think um, not being at school, being in a routine every single day of getting up, going to school, like just knowing that that's <clears throat> where you're going to go and that's your routine, getting out of that's been really hard. It's hard to keep in touch with friends sometimes because we're used to seeing each other in real life rather than just texting. And I also think trying to keep healthy and fit during this time has been stressful because you're not as motivated to do exercise and you just want to eat loads of junk food. It's been hard having to stay inside all the time because I really miss going out with my friends and I really enjoy that. It can be pretty stressful because I see my parents worried about their jobs and long-term things and what's going to happen after the lockdown ends. Yes, just as I thought. But what about the impact of the school closures? What impact is that having on my subjects? Let's find out. So the biggest stresses with school closures have definitely been being an upper sick, meaning that we didn't get our leavers, we didn't get to say a proper goodbye to school. Also not being in a routine, like with your brain, trying to like work every day because we haven't had to do any work because of our A-levels getting cancelled. It's tough staying motivated and having the energy to keep on top of homework and work that we have to do at home because of the lockdown. It's hard to keep up to date with all the work that the school has given us and it doesn't feel right doing it all at home. I also think the social side of school as well, not being able to see my friends, seeing my teachers, just every day having that social interaction. I'm worried about what will happen next year going into fourth year, um, like if I'll get to do the subjects that I chose and if they'll be what I imagined. I also um, think that in regards to the future, like not having school is really difficult because where we don't really know what's going to happen with university and everything so that's been kind of hard to understand what's going to happen next year. I get stressed thinking about the exams that we're doing at home because I really don't know how it's going to work. I wonder sometimes what school will be like when we go back and if it'll ever be the same. So thanks very much to Dr. Feifenhausen there. We were extremely lucky to get him on such short notice So uh, and your fee is in the post by the way. So as you can see, there are lots of ways we get stressed out. And when we do get stressed out, our brain reacts. It kicks into gear. It prepares us for action in order to deal with whatever that situation is. And generally speaking, we react in one of three ways. We face the situation head on and fight. Yeah! Or we decide to escape the situation and take flight. Or we simply shut down and freeze. Now the fight, flight or freeze response is great if we're in mortal danger, but our brains haven't yet recognised the difference between being attacked by a tiger and asking someone out for a date. The response is the same, so we end up in this heightened state too often, and it can leave us feeling exhausted, and in some cases more stressed out than when we started. Now while we're dealing with relatively small amounts of stress, we can generally deal with that quite effectively. But as stress levels begin to rise, things can become a little bit more difficult. And if those stress levels continue to rise, the challenge is even greater. And it can get to the stage where we're starting to struggle to keep all the balls in the air. And when there are simply too many balls to juggle, we simply can't cope anymore. And when we experience those levels of stress, that can lead to more serious conditions, such as anxiety. And for anybody who experiences anxiety, you'll recognize many of the following symptoms. Excessive worrying. Or maybe you're finding it difficult to concentrate. Or maybe your mouth feels dry. Or do you perhaps struggle with restlessness? How's your appetite? And are you having any trouble sleeping? There are lots of symptoms that might indicate that anxiety is an issue. Uh, whether you're feeling more nervous than normal, perhaps you're having panic attacks, or just feeling overwhelmed all the time. I'd suggest making a list of the things that stress you the most. Understanding the things that stress you as an individual is the first step towards understanding what you can do about it. Then you can look at ideas, self-help tools, tips to reduce those stress levels which will in turn improve your mental health as a whole and we'll be looking more at that in part two of the video. 
What is depression? Stress and anxiety can have a negative impact on our mental health in a number of ways, including affecting our mood. But we all experience low mood from time to time, don't we? But what's the difference between low mood and depression? For many of us, a typical mood graph might look something like this. For the most part, we remain around the normal mood zone, with occasional trips up into the happy mood zone and sometimes down into the low mood zone, depending on what's happening in our lives at that time. The thing is, if we're experiencing good mental health, even when we drop into the low mood zone, we normally have the resilience to bounce back up again. For someone experiencing depression, however, their mood graph might look something more like this. As you can see, they're spending much more time in the low mood zone. And when you experience depression, we don't have the resilience or the strength to bounce back up like we normally would. There are many symptoms of depression that you can look out for. Your thinking could be quite negative. I'm useless. I can't even make decisions anymore. I can't even concentrate on what I'm doing. In serious cases, you might be even having thoughts of suicide. And when our thinking is negative, our feelings are impacted. You might notice your mood dropping. You might be feeling sadder than under normal circumstances. Maybe you notice a loss of enjoyment and things that you normally find fun. Your confidence might take a hit. You might be feeling more anxious and worried than under normal circumstances. Your behaviour might be affected. You might find you're eating less or more than you usually would. Same with sleep. Your sleep patterns could be completely disrupted. Sleeping too much or too little. You might find you start avoiding people. Or maybe your temperament's being affected. Maybe you're more argumentative or losing your temper more than other normal circumstances. And all of these symptoms can manifest themselves in physical form. You might be feeling exhausted, more tired than you usually would be. Or maybe you're feeling restless all the time. You could see changes in your weight, either going up or going down. And you might actually be feeling physical aches and pains. Now even when we're enjoying periods of good mental health, we might still experience some of these symptoms from time to time. That's perfectly normal. But if you're experiencing more and more of these symptoms, more regularly, and they're more severe, that might be the first sign that there's maybe something more serious going on. So when it comes to depression, the points to consider are as follows. How many of these symptoms am I experiencing? How severe are those symptoms? And how long have I been having those symptoms for? If there's a pattern developing there and you've been experiencing a lot of symptoms and they've been quite severe for more than a couple of weeks, that could be an indicator that it's not low mood you're experiencing, but depression. There's no hard and fast rule here, but if you're concerned at all about your mood, get in touch with your GP, make an appointment, or talk to an organisation like AWARE who will be ready to give you some good advice. The good news is, there's lots of very simple things we can do to look after our mental health. Things we can do every day, even on a windy day like this one. So keep watching to find out what those things are. Right, so hopefully that's given you a good overview on many of the main mental health issues that are out there and that can have an impact on you. We're going to move on to the second part of the video now where we're going to explore some ideas, some tips, some self-help tools, things that you'll hopefully find practical and that you can use in your day-to-day -day lives to help you deal with these issues should they arise. Keep those connections open with the people you care about. One of the key messages we'll send out in any of our awareness videos is to talk to someone if you think you have an issue. It's so important. As human beings, our connections with other people are vital for us, whether it's our family, our friends, our peers, our colleagues, whoever it may be. So it's so important, especially now, in the current circumstances we find ourselves in, that we keep those connections open and alive. Talking to someone you trust is a great way to release those pent up feelings or tensions or frustrations. It can help give you perspective on what's actually happening. They might be able to help suggest some possible solutions or help you see things more clearly. But more importantly, it shows you're just not alone. For many young people, a parent, a guardian, whoever it is looking after you, is the logical choice if you need to talk to someone about your feelings or you're struggling with your mental health. But that isn't always the case. Sometimes we need somebody different to talk to or we don't feel comfortable talking to our parents about those things. Maybe you feel more comfortable talking to a brother or a sister. Maybe you find them easier to talk to. The important thing is to find someone that you trust and that you don't mind confiding in. Hi James, how are you? 
Good, yeah. Do you want to hop on FIFA Um, Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, I'll go set up now, right? Alright, okay. Alright, see you then. If a face-to-face -face conversation is too much for you, pick up the phone and have a chat with someone you trust. And if that's too much, send a text or WhatsApp. Connect in a way that's comfortable for you. We interrupt today's broadcast to issue a special announcement for all parents or anyone who has young people living with them at this time. Right. First and foremost, yes, I am hiding, so don't blow my cover. Secondly, this is about screen time. Maybe now is the time to relax the rules a little bit. Let's not be too hard on our young people regarding how much time they spent on their phones or their laptops at the minute. Now, normally we run a tight ship, yes, I agree. But right now, they need to be able to stay in touch with their friends, their peers. It's so important with regards to looking after their mental health. So maybe on a temporary basis, let's relax the rules a little bit and hopefully we'll see some beneficial results. Do you know what? I think I might just stay in here till this is all over. Allow yourself to feel. So as we've discussed, talking about your feelings with someone you trust is a great way of getting some support. But if you don't feel like talking to someone, you don't feel ready for that, finding another way to process your feelings in a healthy way is very important. Here are a couple of ideas. Some people prefer a more creative way of expressing how they feel. They find it easier. So whether that's drawing or painting or another art form, or maybe it's making something, crafting. Or perhaps you're into songwriting or music of other kinds, maybe poetry. Whatever you do, if it allows you to express your feelings, that's a good thing. For other people, getting your thoughts out and down on paper is a good way of processing how we feel. Keeping a diary or a journal is a good way of doing this. You can explore your thoughts and feelings. It can help clear your head by getting things down on paper. You can also use a journal for things like setting goals and planning for the future. There's a lot of evidence out there that supports the use of a journal in improving our well-being. It can help boost our mood and in many cases help reduce our stress levels. Try and distract yourself. With us being at home so much, there's an awful lot of this in the background. We're being bombarded with news and a lot of it's negative, a lot of it's very downbeat. It can affect our mood. So do yourselves a favour, switch that off once in a while, give yourself a break from the news, distract yourself. Maybe now is the time to try something new, maybe register for that course you've been thinking about doing. Also now is the time to get out and be more active. If you've seen any of our other videos, you'll know this is the part where I start harping on about exercise. But it's that important. Exercise helps create a chemical in our brain called serotonin, our natural mood booster. And it doesn't matter if you're just doing a little bit of exercise or a lot, it all makes a difference. So it doesn't matter if you're climbing the stairs at home, going out for a walk, going running every day, or like us, you're out on your bike. Do what you can. Get out there and enjoy the outdoors. And if you can't get outside, there are plenty of things you could do at home. There's so much free material online. Fitness classes, yoga, Pilates, whatever takes your fancy. So get stuck in and you'll be feeling a lot better in no time. So maybe it's a good time to try a new hobby or a new sport. Or a movie can be a great form of escapism for a couple of hours. Shh, I'm trying to watch this. Maybe you prefer a good book in a quiet place as a way of relaxing. Or maybe just listening to music is your way of just letting that tension go. Maybe you just like to get your FIFA on. Or building a new island on Animal Crossing is your way of relaxing. The importance of sleep. Ah, it's you. That's me ready for bed, about to retire. Try and get eight to 10 hours of sleep every night, if you can, even if you're staying up late. It's so important, not just for you physically, but also for your mental health as well. If you don't get enough sleep the next day, you're gonna feel tired, you'll feel grumpy, you'll feel irritable, not ready to face the day at all. Likewise, if you sleep for too long, you can end up feeling even more lethargic and demotivated. So striking a balance is very, very important. 
The other thing about sleep is once you get knocked out of a rhythm, it's very hard to get it back. So try and keep to your sleep rhythm as much as you possibly can and your mental health will benefit. Good night. Watch what you eat. Oh, caught me again. I'm not going to lecture you about diet, but just bear in mind, diet plays a much more important role in your mental health than you might realise. So a couple of things, watch your sugar intake. I mean, I love my chocolate and I love my Coca-Cola. Not great, and certainly not great together, but I do balance it out by eating healthily at other times. So everything in moderation, folks, is the message. Too much sugar at night as well will stop you from sleeping, and we've just heard about how important sleep is. Try and go easy on the energy drinks. As well as being chock full of sugars, they're also full of caffeine. Caffeine's a stimulant substance that will make you alert and give you more energy. But the downside to that is when you stop taking it, you'll feel stressed and anxious because you're missing that caffeine. Also watch out for the takeaways. Too many of those means you're taking in large quantities of trans fats. Trans fats are directly linked to feelings of depression. So that's just a few pointers on diet. If you want to find out more about diet, check out some of our other videos where we go into things in a bit more detail. Plan for some good times ahead. Having something to look forward to is a great way of boosting your mood. In the current circumstances, I'm sure we could all make a list of things that we're looking forward to doing once the situation calms down a bit. So make that list, and then you can start ticking those things off as you get to do them. Something to look forward to, things you enjoy, things that give your mood a lift. In fact, I wonder what our subjects were thinking of doing. Maybe we should go back to Dr. Feifenhausen one more time and find out. Hello, Dr. Emil Feifenhausen back again. I also asked my subjects, what were they looking forward to the most once this situation begins to improve? Let's hear what they had to say. So one of the things I'm most excited for is McDonald's. Woo, I love McDonald's. Um, I really miss that. I can't wait to get McDonald's open again. I to get stuck into a McDonald's. Um, I also miss going on nights out with my friends into town and just getting dressed up. You know, hitting the town. Going to conventions again, like Comic Con. Also, things like shopping. I love shopping. I can't wait to get back and play football for my team. Uh, hanging out with my friends again and seeing them in person rather than just online. Going to the beach with my friends. Being able to go swimming, stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to getting back to Forbidden Planet and seeing what manga they have in stock. Things like birthday parties and like barbecues, like gatherings. I'm really looking forward to getting out and playing with my friends again. I also miss my Zumba class that I do. Um, yeah, it's really fun. And uh, that's a great way for me to gain energy and stuff during this, so I really miss doing that. I'm looking forward to getting back into fresh garbage and getting some new jewellery. I'm looking forward to getting some days out with my family again. Well, I hope you all found that very enlightening. I know Einstein and I certainly did. Isn't that right, Einstein? Having something to look forward to is really important and it's a really good way of giving your mood a boost. So make those lists. Write down the things you're looking forward to doing in the near future. Do it with your friends if you want. Whatever way you want to approach this, having those targets, those goals, will give you something to look forward to and make us all feel a bit better, hopefully. Right everyone, thanks very much for sticking with us to the end. I hope particularly you enjoyed that last section and maybe got some good useful ideas that you can take away in relation to maintaining good levels of mental health going forward. Remember folks, try and find what works for you and if you are struggling, please talk to someone. Details of our other services will pop up shortly, so take a screenshot and if you ever need to get in touch, then you'll know how. Thanks again to the young people who helped out with today's video. Uh, I really couldn't have made it without you. Uh, so all that remains for me to say is thanks again for watching. Look after yourselves. Davey, I'm done. Get the fortnight on.